In this video, we want to talk about how to go about choosing a bass drum pedal. We're going to give you some tips on what we look for, and I hope it helps you when you're looking to buy another pedal. Sean, what do you look for in a bass drum pedal? Well, um, for me, I, I look for adjustments right off the bat because um, I like my pedals to feel pretty light. Um, and so right away, I'm going to be looking for adjustments to um, the, the beater angle as well as um, spring tension, which, I mean, every pedal is going to have. Some pedals are going to have a little bit more adjustment in that way, though, as well as um, uh, if you can swap out the cams or not, um, how far back the uh, joint for the, the footboard is, because that's going to choose um, or that's going to decide how, how much force I need to exert to get the pedal to move. Now, I like to play a little bit faster. Not always, but um, for this video especially, I do. So I like to have a longer footboard as I do in, in, uh, on this pedal right here. So mainly ad ad adjustment and, um, and lightweight features are going to be a big thing for me. So do you feel that um, a longer footboard obviously means you can go faster, or is that just the way it is for you? Because I've seen some drummers, some really, really fast drummers who use just a standard like DW pedal or Yamaha pedals. Yeah, and honestly, I can get the same amount of speed um, on a short board as, as I can with a long board. But with a long board, it enables me to uh, uh, get a little bit more, um, more mileage, I guess you could say, out of, out of my pedals before I start tiring. Because uh, the longer the footboard, the farther back you can move. Um, and the you less have more stamina. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the less your foot needs to move and the less energy you need to exert to, to get that same speed out. So, so it doesn't change speed, it just changes um, how, how much work you need to put into it. Okay. Dave, what about you? What do you look for when you buy a bass drum pedal? Well, the first thing I look for is obviously the price. Mm -hmm. I don't want to break the bank and picking one up. But the, the main thing I like to do is I like to take them home. I like to put them on my drum set and play them. I mean, most pedals around the three to four hundred even up to $500 price range, they all have the same kind of adjustability from what I've seen, at least the stuff that I like. For example, I just like to be able to adjust how far apart they are, but pretty much every single pedal does that. Angle of the footboard is important for me. Most pedals have the adjustability for that. And again, you're going to be able to adjust the height of the, of the beater and the spring tension on most pedals anyway. So for me, that's not super important. It's all about the feel. And what I'll do is I'll figure out which one that, I, that I'm interested in, and most music stores will let you try them out. I mean, it's, it's, it's an instrument, right? So you wanna make sure you're comfortable with it. So I take it home and I play it on my kit. Sometimes I'll play it um, in the store too, and whatever feels right. I mean, I played some pedals that have really heavy beaters, it's a little bit more work for me. I played some that have really light beaters, it feels like I'm not even kicking anything. So for me, it's all about the feel. I like to take them home, give them a try, and, and practice with them, so. Cool. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, I wanna go through a couple of things that I look for. Um, the first thing, and this is why I use Gibraltar, and this is why I use Iron Cobra, is I like a little bit wider of a footboard. Now, this isn't as wide as an Iron Cobra or anything like that, but it is generally wider than, I think it's a little bit wider than the, the Yamaha, and mm -hmm. it doesn't taper as much at the bottom. So that's one thing I look for. Another thing I look for, and this obviously can be changed from pedal to pedal, is um, beater weight. I don't like it, like on some of the DW pedals, I really didn't like that the, the end of the beater was heavier. It felt like you were swinging a really heavy hammer as opposed to a smaller finishing hammer. And it just seems like it was easier and I could do stuff faster for longer, similar to what Sean was talking about before. So the next thing I look for is I'll just kind of wiggle the bass drum. Now you see this one's actually quite loose in certain areas and that's because I've used it quite a bit over the last little while and so it could be loosening or it could just be slowly degrading because the pedal is getting old. Um, and then I'll wiggle the U-joints as well. And make sure everything is relatively tight. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, but I like to make sure that it's a tight pedal. Um, and then another thing I look for is the angle of the footboard. And I just want to make sure that when I press the beater down on the bass drum head, the footboard doesn't hit the little tension screw that tightens the bass drum pedal to the hoop. Uh, I've had a couple pedals do that, and you can't use them, you know, especially if that's the one way you like to play the pedal. And if every single time you hit it, you get this loud clinking sound because it's hitting the little screw. Um, so that are some things to look for. Um, like Dave said earlier, the pedal's got to feel really, really good. So you need to go to your music store, you need to start trying them. You know, ask the guy if you can take it home, or ask them about the return policy. Uh, I bought a DW pedal once, I didn't like it, so I returned it, you know. Stuff like I use DW drums, but I just don't like the pedals at all. And so, it's all personal preference. So I hope you enjoyed this video on choosing a pedal. We'll see you in the next one.